Welcome to the Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. Sage here. Today's guest is Ariel Seidman, co-founder and CEO of Hive Mapper. And the Hive Mapper dash cam, for some background, is the world's first crypto miner dash cam. Using the Hive Mapper network, this device puts mapping on autopilot using auto uploads through the mobile app. So you can mine honey tokens by installing Hive Mapper dash cam in your car and add to a decentralized map with 4K street level imagery. The Hive Mapper dash cam is now available for pre-order with a $100 discount you've ordered before the 5th of May. And here to talk to us about this cutting edge technology is Hive Mapper's co-founder and CEO, Ariel Seidman. Welcome to the show, Ariel. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Well, we're keen to hear more about this device. It sounds pretty cool. Could you share your insights from the design of the new Hive Mapper dash cam, please? Yeah, sure. So the dash cam, it looks and smells like every other dash cam in the world. Um, so you install it, you know, forward facing, or you can even do side facing. Uh, it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to set up. Uh, once you're all set up there and you connect it to your Hive Map or contributor app on iOS or Android, um, then you just drive, you know. So it's, uh, you know, as you drive around your commute or you know, going out with friends, or if you're an Uber driver or Lyft driver, um, you just drive. And as you drive, you'll be able to see over time how many honey tokens you're earning. Um, so it is already kind of just capturing something that you already do. Um, it's not asking you to do anything fundamentally different throughout your day as you're driving around on, on the roads. Wow, that sounds fantastic. How is this product different then from other crypto miners or other dash cams where you can possibly mine crypto on a mobile phone app? Yeah, so ours, what we're trying to do here is create a truly kind of set and forget it experience, right? Uh, you know, very inspired by actually another project in the decentralized space called Helium. And so Helium, you deploy this hotspot and you basically are providing wireless coverage for people all around you. And so when we looked at this and said, look, if we're gonna build a dash cam, it has to be a truly set and forget it experience. So, you know, over time, most normal people are not gonna like want to tend to this thing. They're just gonna to wanna to go about their day, kind of like what we were talking about before. And so when we sat down and designed it, we said, look, there's a lot of ways to earn crypto mine. You know, there's a lot of way to mine crypto. But fundamentally, if you're gonna build out a global map and do that with millions of contributors all over the world, it just has to be so incredibly easy and it has to be that truly set it and forget it experience. That sounds really exciting. So it's just open source and allowing people to get involved with this emerging technology. One question comes to mind that's a little bit aside from our main discussion, just about validating the data. Do you have any insights to share about how it works with your Hive Mapper network? Yeah, so that's one of the unique features of the Hive Mapper dash cam is we said to ourselves, look, it's really critical that nobody can pretend like they're mapping or collecting this data in a location that they're not located in, right? So if if you're, let's say, you know, actually in rural Brazil or rural Australia, as an example, and then you're pretending to be in Los Angeles, that's fundamentally a really big problem for the map. And so what we've done is in the actual Hive Map or dash cam, added security features that will ensure that the location of the device is in fact the location where it's located and it won't be able to pretend like it's actually in another location. Wow, that's so great because there's so many remote, remote areas that haven't been sort of placed on a map yet. So this is exciting. Could you explain to us how the Hive Mapper network works in a decentralized framework being owned and operated by its contributors, please? Yeah, sure. So. What, you know, what we feel is really, really important is that if the contributors are doing a lot of the work, right, they're, look, everybody at this point knows data is valuable, right? That's no longer um, up for debate. And so we felt like, look, if you're participating in helping grow this global map, and the world is a very, very, very large place, uh, and if you're, you're helping grow the map, then you should actually own part of that global map. And so to us, that ownership is really the key of the decentralization, right? Um, if we're gonna build a map, kind of like we were talking about before, 
over all of these remote areas, all of these busy streets, you know, new, you know, areas that quite frankly aren't very, very well mapped, like a Lagos, Nigeria, or a Manila, or a Kuala Lumpur, um, by the existing providers. If we're going to do that, we're going to need millions of people contributing to the map, and so ownership is really the key. And so the decentralization technology enables us to create trust that as somebody is actually contributing to the map that they are in fact doing so and doing so correctly and authentically and therefore they earn x number of tokens and that gives them the ownership in the map that's great uh, thanks for explaining that for us in a way we can understand you mentioned the honey tokens where would the contributors store their honey tokens in wallets Yes, so it'll be like you know many other decentralized applications. You know, it'll have a wallet. You'll see how many tokens um, you have, and then ultimately be able to move them around uh, to other wallets if you wish. Great. So generally, there is a little bit of market dominance in the field of mapping at the moment. What's the benefit of having a community-owned decentralized mapping network as an alternative to the market-dominating brands? Yeah, that's a good question. So. <laughs> Um, look, I think if, you know, you're a big brand, um, you know, say Google as an example, you know, fundamentally, if you live in Lagos, Nigeria, or in Manila as an example, and you want to improve the map, the Google Maps, the number of tools that you have at your disposal or the, num the incentives, quite frankly, to go ahead and do that are fairly limited, right? It's fundamentally a product manager sitting within Google Maps Mountain View headquarters deciding, okay, I'm going to refresh this area and then this area and then this area. They're the ones making the decisions about which parts of the world get mapped and how frequently they get mapped. With a decentralized approach where the incentives are ownership, well, great. The people in Lagos, Nigeria want to improve the map. There's incentives, there's tools, there's technology to go do that. That community can just push forward and make an amazing map of Lagos, Nigeria, without relying on a product manager back in headquarters in Mountain View, California. Well, it sounds really inspiring because it might give adventurers even more purpose to go traveling to these remote places to capture the data on a street level. And I can see in your background, you've got a beautiful blue sky coming through there. Um, where are you calling in from? We're based in San Francisco. So we're based in San Francisco, California. Most of the team is here. We do have some folks scattered around the world as well. Uh, but yeah, the core team is uh, lives and works here in uh, San Francisco, California. Great. And would you mind just explaining the difference between street level data and, for example, other geospatial data like the sky? Yeah. So you know, any map has a lot of layers to it, right? Um, you know, we're starting and what we're announcing today or sorry, it was yesterday, uh, is the pre-orders for the dash cam, as you, as you said in your, in, in your intro to this piece. Um, and that's all street level. Uh, I mean, look, a lot of human activity occurs around street level. Uh, and so that's why we started there. Streets is like where we work, where we play, where we move around, right? All of those things. Um, and so that'll be the first layer. Over time, we, we will imagine a world where there will be additional layers, right? So an airborne perspective to get the entire, whether that be satellite or drones or some combination of the two, you know, traffic is another layer. So yes, today is the first level, which is streets. But yeah, over time, you're going to have many, many, many different layers to the map. That's fantastic. Now you have some big brand crypto investment partners such as Solana. What value do they bring to the platform, please? Yeah, so Solana is, look, the underlying blockchain technology, right, that moves all these transactions, verifies these transactions onto this global ledger, there's a lot of work that needs to go into that. So if is an application, if we had to build both the mapping application, which is quite an ambitious project, and also the underlying blockchain technology that manages all the transactions, manages who owned which map tiles, when did they map them, all of that information, and does that in an immutable way, manages the wallets and all that kind of stuff, that would be a, 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 a huge undertaking. And so instead we decided that we're gonna build HiveMapper on top of Solana because they have one of the fastest and most importantly, one of the most cost-effective ways to build a blockchain. 
Great, thanks for explaining that for us. So we're reaching the end of the discussion now. Will space satellites, for example, they're being sent up into orbit a lot more these days. Will space satellites for GPS navigation impact the HiveMapper dash cam? And how will HiveMapper create opportunities in Web 3.0? Okay. So in terms of um, additional, you know, look, the more GPS satellites out there in the world, the better it is for us, right? Uh, and as that GPS technology improves, um, as they launch new satellites and so forth, that just improves the underlying accuracy of the hive map or global map, right? Because we're getting more precise data, we're getting faster, more coverage in more locations via more satellite, GPS satellites. That's all goodness that we love. Um, I think the other part of your question in terms of creating new Web3 opportunities kind of goes back to the question of map layers, right? Um, this project is an open source project. Other people can come in here and build new kinds of dash cams, right? Dash cams ultimately that are really well for exterior mounts, right? Dash cams that are really great for, you know, certain markets like Asia or Africa or South America, right? That help bring the price point down. Um, new types of sensors, right? Very, very cost effective LIDAR sensors, air quality sensors that we want to add to the network. So there's going to be tremendous opportunity to participate, to be able to add new layers to the map, and then also continue to help bring down the cost of these sensors so that more people can use them in more parts of the world. Well, that's fantastic. A very exciting place to be with the launch of a new product, the first ever Hive Mapper Dash Cam. Um, so does that mean that you have the patent for this and no one else can create one? Absolutely not, no. So this, the HiveMapper dash cam is entirely open source. It's based upon these uh, open source specifications called the open dash cam. Uh, and we invite partners to work with us to get their versions of the dash cam running on the HiveMapper mapping network. So uh, absolutely not. We want as many of these devices out there in the world um, we're not, we're definitely not going to be the only creators of these things. We know there's going to be other people who are going to create amazing dash cams. Uh, and like we talked about, sell them into different markets with uh, other features. That's going to be awesome to watch. Wow, that sounds great. Thanks so much for being available to, to talk to us today, Ariel. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Ariel Seidman, the co-founder and CEO of Hive Mapper. Please watch the full interview on Calki Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calki Media.